Hey guys, welcome back. Duke Wayne Lopez here. After making so many errors today on my videos, I am going YOLO style. So, we're covering weeks four, five, and six today. These chapters are huge, minus five. Five is kind of small, which is amazing because the other ones are like, oh my gosh. It's like 100 pages for one, 150 pages for the other, but they're extremely important and you need to memorize them, know them, maintain that stuff in your brain cavity thing up here because they are extremely important i'm also hyped up because i have been chugging coffee because coffee is life okay so chapter four sorry i have notes because these chapters are huge so i gotta have something so that i actually stay on track and not get sidetracked and go all add in here so week four is all about assessments so it's all about when you pull up to the scene what do you do? So before you even get out of the ambulance, when you're approaching the scene, the first thing that you're going to do is a scene size up. That means that basically you're going to look around your area, see about safety, everything like that. You're going to notice different things that could have caused the, say that you're going to something with a trauma. You might see a car that's flipped over. You're like, okay, somebody was in that car. So you know what you're kind of expecting. Uh, so once when you finish the scene size up, you get out of the, the ambulance, you make sure that you're safe, your partner's safe. That's the biggest importance right there is that you're you're safe and then your partner's safe. Because without you guys, nobody's getting saved. After that, you're gonna go into your primary assessment, which is gonna have like your general impressions, stuff like that on the patients. Uh, they go through a step-by-step -step process. Remember all the acronyms because that's gonna help you with your assessment. So you're gonna have your sample, you're going to have your OPQRST, you're going to have all that other good stuff. You even have one, I can't remember the acronym for this, but it's kind of just basic stuff. Um, I don't think that I even have the, yes. They might give you a paper like this. I colored, coded, and highlighted, and all that other good stuff. Basically what this is, is an assessment chart. So it's going to tell you everything from trauma patients and medical patients, significant, insignificant, uh, depreciated mental statuses, stuff like that. Memorize this. And the other acronym was DCAP BTLS. Basically, that's looking for specific type of injuries, different things in the skin, stuff like that. So that that helps you tremendously. Make sure that you remember this when they give you the paper, because this right here, that's your final. That's why I got it all highlighted and all jacked up. So. <laughs> I got like six copies of this. This is the only one that I actually doctored up so that I can actually follow all the arrows and stuff perfectly. I recommend it because it gets kind of confusing with it just being black and white. So if you can highlight it and do all this other crazy stuff, I got I got two different colors going down. I got green, blue, and then I have red for the one that touches all of them. So, and then the bottom one is that. Uh, the top line where it says scene safety, BSI, PPE, MOI, NOI, and number of patients, stuff like that. In the assessments when you're actually doing it in your uh, clinicals and stuff when you're doing like the fake ones make sure that you verbally say it so that they know that you're looking for that stuff and that you have your PPE and stuff like that PPE is just gloves face mask stuff like that whatever you need so yeah memorize your assessment I just now went off track by talking about that well primary assessment kind of segues into it anyways so that's a big that's a big piece of score right there is to memorize that assessment. They bring that up every single week. They still bring it up and they still challenge people on actually knowing it. So they say basically got to know that better than your football team, Dolphins baby. <clears throat> Anyways, after that, you go into vital signs. So after you finish your primary assessment, you go straight into the vitals. So you're checking blood pressure, glucose, O2 sat, anything that you can think of, heart rate, respiration rate. Uh, pupils, you gotta check their pupils if they're even, if you're suspecting stroke or anything like that. Their skin tone, color, condition, are they sweaty, is it cold sweat, hot sweat, or is it just hot outside, things like that. You gotta figure out their mental status. The mental status, are they uh, aware of you when you come into the room, are they looking at you? Uh, are they only responding to you when you actually speak to them, like yelling at them? Uh, do they only respond to pain or are they just plain just out of it? They're not responding to nothing. These are all important things that you have to remember to use in your vitals. Um, so in your secondary assessment, 
Uh, you do that after your vital check. You reassess everything after you perform your interventions on them. So if you apply oxygen, see if the oxygen is working for them, whether it's for their mental status, uh, just to help their O2 saturation go up to 94%, stuff like that. <clears throat> you always have to communicate with dispatch and everything. You got to let the hospitals know what's going on, who you're transporting to them, so that they can get the appropriate doctors to the facility if need be. So if you take them to a hospital and they don't have the doctor, then guess what? They're not getting treated. And guess whose fault that lies on? Yours, because you didn't communicate to them. They didn't know that they needed that. And that all comes down to the medical terminology. Also, you have to use proper medical terminology when it's appropriate. You don't want to start spilling it all out at a at a clerk at the counter, and she has no idea what the heck you're talking about. So be respectful. Understand that not everybody's trained with medical terminology, and just clearly communicate with them. Doctors, go ahead. All the terminology, you earn that crap because you went to EMT school and you cram for freaking however long you cram for <clears throat> and yeah you earned it so especially if you go for paramedic paramedic phew, mm -hmm, i'm going for that next and that's going to be a year-long cram session so nobody can touch me after that <laughs> just kidding but don't get cocky stay humble it, it'll take you a long way but just know when to use your terms so after you finish that you're going to go back into another lab so with that lab, you're going to go into your stretchers and stuff. I think I brought that up in the last video. Uh, you're going to learn how to put those stretchers inside the ambulance. You're going to learn how to load people onto it, how to uh, unload people off of it, uh, how to transport people from a stretcher to an actual bed and vice versa. Uh, that clinical, it's going to have, for us at least, it was three different clinicals in one day. So they have the stretchers. After you're done with the stretchers, then you go to the next room and they'll do blood pressure. Then blood pressure, the guy was like, oh, we got half their class is going to be dropped out. We're like, no way, man. Guess what? Midterms came by. Before midterms even showed up, people were dropping out because they're like, I don't have 80%. <laughs> I'm going to fail. <laughs> so we didn't lose 50%. Uh, we probably lost maybe a quarter of our class. Not too bad. But, uh, yeah, you're going to do that. You're going to do your blood pressure. Uh, they'll teach you how to check it. Try and get your own stethoscope because the stethoscopes in school are kind of meh because students don't know how to treat them right. Uh, I bought my own. I bought a Lippmann Lightweight, I think it was. Uh, you don't have to get the Lippmanns. They're kind of expensive. Mine was 70 bucks, but I expect to be using it after school also. Uh, that's going to be something I just carry with me. So I want to have my own personal one because I'm into hygiene. Uh, so I got myself the Lippmann Lightweight, 70 bucks. It's amazing it's real light uh nice quality um i can hear everything with it uh, it's like night and day using the ones over here in school and using mine so you check the blood pressure never make up a blood pressure if you can't hear anything let the teacher know until you do hear something because that is very important don't be the guy that makes up vitals because once when you start doing that people start dying and it's not going to be pretty pretty much if somebody dies and they figure out that you faked your vitals, yeah, get ready for that. <laughs> They're also going to revisit oxygen. So that's what they did with us. They took us in there and just reiterated everything. Um, they went a little bit more in depth with uh, non rebreathers and uh, nasal cannulas. And they gave their own personal experiences, which I love hearing that from paramedics, is their own personal experiences with them. Uh, <clears throat> they'll reiterate all the leaders for different applications so with nasal cannulas you got to know the leaders for that non rebreathers know the re know the leaders for that they're going to be looking for you to be maintaining this if you're not maintaining it ask questions they love answering your questions so like they always say the only dumb question is the one that you don't ask so anyways you do that you cram you take your next test Going to week five. Week five is the easy one because all you have is two chapters. The two chapters are pharmacology, which is like your medication, stuff like that, that you can actually uh, give to people uh, with consent. You have to actually call medical and uh, get permission from medical, medical direction. Uh, 
So they tell you the medication that you're allowed to give and they explain what they're used for and what they're not used for and when not to use them. It's very important for you to memorize when to use it and when not to use it. That's going to be a huge thing on all of your tests. Um, make sure you memorize also the brand names. There's three different names. There's a brand name, chemical name, and uh, I guess that ain't to do again. I think it's a generic name. So memorize those. Uh, you don't have to memorize it for every medication. Just try and do it for like aspirin, uh, all that good stuff, Narcan, uh, the EpiPen, stuff like that, epinephrine. <laughs> Just memorize what is what, basically. <laughs> so you go through that. That's an easy week. Um, still cram because it's an, it's an important two chapters. Uh, you're, do, you're doing the pharmacology and you're doing uh, respiratory emergencies. Respiratory emergency is very important because that's going to be a lot of the complaints that you're going to be getting is respiratory. Week six, you're going straight from respiratory to cardiac. So you're going to go into the cardiac emergencies. They're going to teach you about heart attacks, all the different heart problems. Uh, Gosh. All right, sorry about that. That was one of the uh, teachers over here. Scared me half to death. <laughs> all right, so anyways, you're going to do cardiac emergencies. You're going to figure out all the different things about the heart. Uh, memorize all the different components of the heart because we had a extra credit thing. Everybody got like one or two things right. So make sure that you memorize the different components of the heart. So the ventricles, your uh, aorta, everything like that, the arc of aorta or aortic arc, I think they call it. So memorize all that stuff. <clears throat> You're going to go into your diabetic stuff in the next chapter. Um, pretty much they're going to teach you when to use... Uh, the glucose stuff like that they're going to teach you about hypo hyperglycemia uh, make sure that you memorize everything in that chapter as well all the chapters in week six are very important you're going to be on your midterms you're going to be on all your tests from that point on you're going to get into alert allergies you're going to get into poison stuff like that how to treat them what medications to use so pretty much when you learn about your medications a week prior you're going to start figuring out the exact circumstances of when you're going to use it, what it's called, so you're going to learn about anaphylaxis, everything like that. Uh, your shot comes back to you in that, in that chapter. Uh, hypoxia comes back to you, so that's why you have to remember these terms. They're going to keep coming back every single chapter. And once when you memorize those terms, everything's going to get so much easier for you because you're going to, you're going to see the term and you're going to be like, okay, that's referring to this part of the body. That's referring to this symptom. So... Make sure that you work really hard at remembering your poisons, your allergies, diabetes. Uh, the respiratory and the cardiac gets pounded into you, so that should be easy to actually come to you. These three here, the diabetic, the, the allergies, and poison control, that stuff they don't focus on as much. They still focus on a lot, but it's up to you to actually go that extra mile to beat it into your brain. So make sure that you maintain that. Those chapters are really big. So just make sure that you focus hardcore on those. But I'm going to try and make another video, maybe not today, but hopefully tomorrow, the day after. Uh, they're about to kick me out of the class. Uh, so yeah, that's it for today. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Leave me any questions, comments, improvements in my speech, anything like that. <laughs> and I will see you guys next time. See ya.